Uh, Miles is the head of global enterprise marketing at Del Boomi, and he also runs hashtag CIO chat. Um, according to Lead Tales, Miles is the ninth leading influencer, uh, leading influencer of CEOs. He's the facilitator of hashtag CIO chat. The chat has executive level participants from around the world in a mix of industries, including banking, insurance, education, and government. He also heads global enterprise marketing at Boomi, as I said. So, Miles, welcome. Thank you. I'm really thrilled to be with you this morning. Great. Yes, we're we're in the same time zone, which is the uh, Pacific time zone. So nice, nice early start for us. But uh, thank you for uh, making the effort. Um, so I mentioned I mentioned uh, hashtag CIO chat, um, and I know you just had your first virtual event, uh, Miles, because I was on part of it last week. Can you tell everyone on here a little bit more about uh, about what goes on at um, CIO chat? Yeah, and CIO Chat was uh, started by John Dodge, who um, is was CIO Magazine, and a few years ago, I, I got the honor to to take it over. We're a nonprofit 501c3 company, and um, basically, we do CIO education and then STEM diversity uh, scholarships uh, for the places that we go to. So, um, but. You know, we've gotten to talk a lot about this topic, so I'd love to share today that perspective as well as what we've been learning from sure. our friends like Jeannie Ross. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, yes, her name came up more than once yesterday. Um, so what are the, what have your CIOs involved in that told you about the days to come and, uh, and how they think digital transformation efforts around the world will be affected by the pandemic and, uh, and the recession that is undoubtedly already happening yeah i mean we've we've had a bunch of discussions about the the pandemic and how it's impacted things i mean the good news is that cios say that the business is really now rocking you know the value that it provides in a way that has never occurred before i mean they um have been doing amazing things to keep things running um i was amazed one of our cios a couple of weeks ago said she couldn't come to the chat even though she wanted to participate in the conversation because she was wiping down the counters to make sure it was a clean environment near the data center. Right. Um, so CIOs are standing up in lots of different ways. Um, their hero is just like grocery workers and hospital workers because they're keeping the companies running. So, you know, thank your CIO when you get a chance. But in terms of digital transformation, um, they and others are talking about this being a, an opportunity to really become a digital first company. And there, there are some amazing things I've been talking to folks about, about how higher ed, for example, will flip its entire model to be online first. Uh, and, and other industries are having similar uh, changes. Uh, just think about uh, the brittleness of the supply chain, and now you've got to make it work um, and be more flexible. So CIOs are all in the middle of that discussion and are are making their companies better at digital. So digital ex is is accelerating in many of the companies that we talk to regularly. Right, right. And 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 one of the um, the questions I I came in on on your event last week was that the role of the CIO um, might be changing or is changing as a result of this. Can you tell us what you've you've heard about that? Yeah, I mean, I, Deloitte's done a lot of thinking about this, and they talk about how um, the, the CIO is, is moving from, you know, you know, just running kind of like a utility, if you want to think about it, to being a, uh, you know, a change co-creator or change instigator in some cases where they perceive the change first. Um, and but it's really important that they have the board relationships. And relationships that one of our CIOs, uh, Joanne, uh, Joanna Young, likes to talk about the fact that it has to be 460 degrees because she's talking about up, across, and around and outside the organization. The CIO has, has to be a big relationship builder to make transformation work because it starts honestly with the people and process before we start talking about technology. Right. 
So let's talk a little bit about digital transformation. Um, we uh, uh, covered, we heard quite a quite a bit yesterday, and some case studies um, which were which were interesting. One of the things that came out, of course, was there's a, a lot of confusion around terminology um, when it comes to digital transformation. So let's take digitization and digital. There's there's a difference. Can you can you talk us through what the difference is? Yeah, I, th I, I really like this um, way of thinking about it, and I think it can help the folks that are on uh, the call to, uh, to, to think a little differently about, uh, about it. Um, you know, it's interesting, I was listening uh, a week ago to a professor at uh, Columbia University of Strategy who says, that, you know, initially when people thought of digitization, it was for the marketing folks. But now it, everything is becoming digitally infused or digital first kind of thing. Uh, Jeannie Ross puts it nicely in her book. Um, she talks about how the initial wave of digital transformation was really about taking something that was an analog process and making it a digital. And for me, you know, the best example of what we were doing for many, many years was uh, expense reporting. So in, in her, for example, um, you know, you took something that was paper and made it, you know, a digital process. So it was just literally about taking something you were doing and it was largely, you know, on the bottom side of the ledger that you were fixing uh, from an accounting perspective. You were, you were transforming, um, you know, processes, but, but now it's really about digital and, and digital in the new version of digital transformation is, is not about Efficiency, it's about affecting you know, how you interact with your customers or your value props for customers. You know, a great example of this is GE several years ago. They had built all the streaming technology coming off of jet engines mm -hmm. and uh, they applied it and it suddenly became that instead of selling jet engines, they sold a service where they kept the jet engines uh, running. Uh, rather than selling it. So they transformed what their product was. And so digital is about creativity, it's about innovation, and it's about transforming how you make money rather than how you become more efficient. Right. Okay. So talking of everyone everyone wants to be successful at it. What what do you think companies have to put in place to be successful uh, uh, in a digital world? Yeah, I mean, I think it starts with with you know finishing all the work that needed to happen about creating what what Jeannie Ross calls an operational backbone. So, uh, in her book, Design for Digital, she says the first thing you need to do, although you're not going to get competitive advantage from it, is you have to fix the things that you have. You have to have your your process digitized. Uh, you have to um, fix data quality issues. You have to create a single view of key entities, um, and, and that's table stakes, but you have to do that because it's a legacy business, that's where your advantage is gonna come from. But she goes on to talk about, you know, then what you wanna do is to turn that into APIs um, that can be consumed, um, and there are amazing stories she talks about where APIs allow new businesses to be started. And then finally, you need to have a digital platform which is allowing you to rapidly experiment. And so the, uh, it's, a, it's a big change that she's suggesting, but I think what we're starting to see is businesses that can you know, take advantage of their historical legacy um, stuff, but also um, create these digital offerings or as Open Group likes to call it, digital products. Um, I think uh, out of that is where the, the opportunity going forward is. So, you know, help the legacy businesses uh, move quickly. Now, the MIT CISER research says that 72% roughly of companies aren't ready yet. 51% um, are in silos, 21% are still um, in band-aids and duct tape. So this is the time to quickly fix the, the duct tape. And then with that, uh, to transition into creating digital offerings um, out there. Right. And, and how about, you know, you talked about the things you have to put in place to uh, uh, to to uh, 
give yourself a chance of success. But how about organisationally? Um, how does it, how does an organisation go about uh, changing its organisation? So yeah. Transformation. Yeah, I mean it's it's interesting. I had the chief enterprise architect from DBS Bank come visit me uh, last summer. Um, and I was amazed because he confirmed everything that was in the book. But the, the idea is, is that, you know, obviously the operational backbone, probably keeping that running and all that stuff needs a historical kind of organization. But, mm. you know, in this, in these innovation teams, you flip the organization, the pyramid goes upside down and you have hundreds, if not thousands of these innovation teams of small folks who are chartered, that's a big idea that I've talked to Charlie, who's involved with Open Group and at Forrester a lot about, but um, basically what you're doing in um, those teams, um, and to use the, I, I give credit to Open Group, even though it goes uh, from the general, but the team of teams idea is a, uh, is a, is a notion that, becomes uh, prevalent in digital organizations. They have lots of teams that are experimenting rapid fire using things like low code, um, uh, but without creating, according to CIOs, tech data or, or security issues. Um, and and they're, they're doing it in such a way that they're able to rapidly build lots of different offerings that transform their customers' experience. Right. Okay. Well, that that takes us into the world, the world of people. And uh, Peter Drucker fam famously said that uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. So, how how important are the, the 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 people and processes in a digital transformation? We talked a bit about the technology, but what about the people and the processes? You know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've talked to CIOs in the CI chat, and folks wanna occasionally come and join us on Thursdays uh, from 2 to 3 Eastern. They're welcome to come and they want to just hear what we're going, we're talking about. They're welcome to follow me on Twitter. Uh, but uh, the, the the people and processes is just so important. I mean, the technology issues for and, and the failures that have happened are huge out there in terms of organizations. But it all starts with people and processes. CIOs tell me over and over again, if I can just get the organization behind it. Now, I want to I want to say something here that I think is important that we all recognize. Um, change is not easy. I mean, I one of the people I got to spend a lot of time with over the last couple of years is the CIO with the American Cancer Society, and he said, you know, and, and they did some amazing just transformational things for people who have cancer that, um, you know, my heart goes out to over the last couple of years as part of their digital transformation. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, everybody from the top of the company to the lowest level person knew they needed to make this change. But change means changing people's lives. People do things differently after the change happens. And so it's hard. Yeah. Um, but if you can, if you can be a change leader as a CIO or, you know, the key enterprise architect supporting um, them, uh, you have an opportunity to, to truly cause transformation. The transformation starts from the people side first. And there's a great book that's out there that you could take a look at. And at this early in the morning, I'm not going to remember the author's name, but, you know, she basically talks about personally transforming first before you do the technology stuff. So, uh, I think that's where it starts with, and then you can tackle process, and then you can tackle technology. Yeah, yeah. No, it's well, and if the if you don't uh, if the people don't change, then it's just going to be a constant battle, isn't it? And, uh, never never going to really work. So let's flip a bit, Miles, to uh, to what's going on in the open group um, as regards digital. What do you know about what we're, what we're doing? We heard we heard Dave Lansby talk a little yesterday, but. Uh, Anything that you've seen uh, and been involved with uh, inside our community? Yeah, I, I, I've been absolutely amazed at, at all of the things that are going and how um, forward thinking uh, Open Group has been in all of this, uh, which is my hats off to you. Um, so, I mean, you've got DP Bach that's been going on for a while about how do you think about digital, and then you've got um, IT for IT. You know, trying to think about 
the, the teaming structure and, and all of the issues in building digital products. Um, and then you have the architecture team, which is thinking about, you know, how do you architect these things correctly? So it's, it's been really amazing to um, re-engage with Open Group after a, a little bit of a hiatus and, and just see the amount of, of thinking that's going on. But, you know, I, I always like to say that, you know, I, every time I go to an Open Group meeting, I feel like I'm home because, you know, us that think systems is maybe 4% of the population. So um, <laughs> you don't get a lot of that interaction outside uh, your, and sometimes even in your organization. But it's always great to, to talk to folks in Open Group because you're, you're already there. So you right. get it, and you're you're trying to push the agenda forward. Oh, that's great to hear, Mars. Thank you, and and thanks for coming back. Del, Del Boomi's one of our more recent gold members at the Open Group, um, um, expanding the participation. So uh, thank you for that too. It's uh, great to see. So we did have a a, a question that uh, has come in, um, and I know uh, you you've probably heard something about this on the uh, or been involved in discussions on this on the CIO chat, but but um, it's a question around how digital transformation affects or reflects the 5G rollout and vice versa. Has that been a, a topic you've, you've addressed in your chats? We've talked a bit about 5G. I mean, obviously, um, as we create connectivity, it's going to allow for um, you know, kinds of amazing things from a digital perspective. You know, one of the things that we, we've been talking about, as I said earlier, is coronavirus. And uh, a number of cities have been very forward thinking about how do I reach portions of my population that I normally don't reach um, during this crisis? Um, and, you know, how do I how do I enable education to take place? And so from a higher ed perspective, they've discovered that they've had to do all kinds of things, including providing connectivity to their students. And in one school, they told me they, they, gave, they gave away, a, you know, on a temporary basis over a thousand laptops yeah. um, in order to make it happen. So look, digital transformation is more than about companies. It's about uh, the world as I'm looking at the image up here. Uh, how do we make it, a, you know, connect better? So yeah. uh, geez, an important element uh, in enabling people, especially as you, you create um, bandwidth. And, and the, you know, one other story I'll tell you about is there's this uh, taxi company. Um, it, actually, it was, a, the, it was the, the cell company down in, uh, I believe it was um, Kenya, mm -hmm. that used technology to completely transform people's lives. And you know, give solar cells to a, a, a goat herders whose children were lit, studying under kerosene at night in the house. Um, it's kind of amazing. So digital is really impacting the world. Or, you know, one of our customers, Doctors Without Borders, you know, uses us where they're connected sometime and then they're not connected other times. And how do you make all that, that work? Uh, so it's been really amazing to see how connectivity is critical. It, it's, you know, it's how we communicate. It's how we operate. And we've seen where the gaps have happened. We've talked a lot. I mean, you saw it at our, our event. We had connectivity issues yeah. with our, uh, you know, provider of, of things. So, you know, one of the big things I think that's going to be a top priority for CIOs in fixing as the days roll on is how do we get better connectivity? How do we make sure that these service providers like Zoom and others are operating? And Zoom has become suddenly in the United States, if you haven't noticed, like Coca-Cola yeah. for, the, for the news media and others to describe this, this, this era we're in right now. No, absolutely. It's, uh, and you know, right now there's a lot of forgiveness for things not being perfect, but it, it won't always be thus. <laughs> so uh, yes, yes, yes. you'll need to get that. So uh, this being the, the open group, Miles, there's, uh, there's bound to be a question about enterprise architecture, of course. Um, and a, a question's come in, uh, how important do you think it is that enterprise architects take the role as change enablers in contrast to governance? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think that enterprise architecture architects are foundational. And, and it's interesting, Jeannie told me when she was starting to write her new book, 
that she was finally writing another book for Enterprise Architects. Now, it ended up not just being about Enterprise Architects, but, you know, embedded in there are, you know, how critical Enterprise Architects are for, for driving forward uh, the company in, into a digital world. So uh, I think Enterprise Architects is critical. Now, one of the things we've talked about in IT for IT, however, is that we need to provide, uh, as these digital teams happen, um, more guidance, um, you know, in terms of how to run things, in terms of standards and things like that. Mm -hmm. And and I think I think we can stand up to that uh, challenge, but you know, enterprise architecture is going to need to be supportive of these you know loosely coupled teams that are going to need to be creating the innovation um, and experimenting. Um, and, and, you know, we have this whole concept in open group about, you know, you know, f you know, people who start by farming and then there's a town and then there's a, you know, a, a, you know, city kind of thing. Yeah. Um, is and settlers and the, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I, at this morning, at this time in the morning, I'm just, <laughs> you know, trying to remember all the terms, but, but, but that those concepts are good <laughs> concepts, but, um, and so I think. You know, enterprise architects are the foundation for being a digital company, and they need to become enablers of that. And if they can do that step, they're going to become more and more relevant to uh, yeah. to the business success. Yeah, I think so too. Well, Miles, we're just about out of time. Uh, any, uh, thank you for your insights, and uh, I really appreciate you uh, participating today. Um, any last thoughts for the the people on on our uh, event today, or suggestions of what they should be reading, or uh, any particularly interesting articles or books? Yeah, I mean, it, it, there are lots of things that are coming out, and you know, obviously, start with design for digital. But there's some some other things that have been coming out recently. I try to, you know, regularly. You know, um, people started shipping me books a while back, so I'm trying to, to review those things as, as fast as I can. I, I just think the, the important closing remark that I would say is that architecture is really important as we, uh, as we go forward as organizations. Um, we've got big tasks in front of us, um, you know, but one of the things CIOs told me a while back when I was interviewing them about enterprise architects is that they felt that enterprise architecture was critical. They said that, you know, if properly constructed enterprise architecture is sitting with the strategy folks, however, that's constructed in the business and they're, they're the forward function of IT. They're figuring out where the organization needs to go. And so um, today where we need to go is digital. So it's reaching into those key portions of the organization that need to become digital and helping the CIO to either co-create or, in some cases, instigate change and then find the stakeholders who are going to be behind it. Um, right. Sometimes we can perceive the digital change faster than others, but if we can do that, I think uh, the road forward for architects is going to be, enterprise architects is going to be a, a good one. That's a, a great note to leave things on. Miles My, Sewer, thank you very much for joining us today.